Hi everyone, welcome. Um, I hope you're having a great day and if not, I hope that this helps you to have a better one. So today's project is going to be part one in a series that I'm going to do uh, using those Crayola pencils like we had talked about before um, that in the shelter in place you um, may not have professional pencils or anything but you can use Crayola pencils to make some beautiful pictures. Uh, so I will have some of those pictures for you um, at the end of this video for you to watch. Also, I wanted to tell you that today's project is also, uh, the template is in the description. So check out the description and um, look at those playlists that are there, find more videos. And one of the things that I really like to do, one of my goals is to have this um, be an uplifting and encouraging and maybe even a motivating thing for everyone, including myself. Um, I like to draw and color and uh, this gives me an opportunity. I am still working a, you know, like a full-time job right now. So this gives me an opportunity to kind of decompress and de-stress. So I just wanted to let you know that, you know, drawing and coloring um, does something for your brain <laughs> besides the cognitive ability or learning things that will help your brain it lowers your blood pressure it gives you a better attitude it relaxes you I mean there are so many benefits to that and sometimes you actually make you know like a beautiful picture that you want to share with somebody so I'm always thinking like write a little note turn it into a postcard, put it in an envelope and send it to someone or hand it to someone and write something encouraging on it. Everybody could use a little affirmation and encouragement right now with this shelter in place and everything. So um, that's one of my goals. So I want you to think about that. The other thing I was going to tell you in that template, you'll have two of the same picture on uh, the page that you can print. And I designed them with the eight and a half by 11 paper so you can print it out. Um, on whatever printer you have. One of my recommendations is always to use cardstock. I usually use 110 unless uh, 110 pounds unless I'm doing like a folded card then I'll do like a 65 67 but it depends on um, whether you're using markers or not like how saturated your paper is going to get that you want to keep that in mind when you're creating a project to give to someone. Second um, I really wanted to tell you that if you print it out and um, like today's project, I'm thinking you're going to be practicing drawing um, also uh, to think about that. Like, do you want to have it very dark black? So if you can print it out in grayscale, um, you'll be able to see the difference of your uh, lining it with a Sharpie. So for today's project, you're going to need to print the template if you'd like, or if you'd like to just free draw and practice um, with me as you le learn about some of those techniques. Or um, if you would like to uh, just, you know, cut those in half, we're going to keep in mind that half of that page we're going to think about as practice. And we don't have to worry or about who, what people are going to think about it, and we're going to let ourselves practice different techniques, okay? So um, the second half maybe will be, be your finished product, project, but um, and maybe you'll want to give that to someone. And you can, of course, use this template um, over and over again if you'd like to uh, keep practicing. So um, hopefully you enjoy today's project, and it'll be part one of a series of different techniques and uh, projects that we're going to make using the same template because it's going to be like an experiment. Okay, so let's just dive right in. Hi everyone, so today we're looking at um, this coloring page. So I made up something and this is kind of like our worksheet, a warm up when you're going to start um, practicing drawing and coloring. Um, I realized uh, that I am often doing some kind of drawing, but I need a warm up. So it takes me a while to get that um, muscle memory movement of um, shapes and things that I want to do. So right now you're looking at the page that you could download. Um, I printed this one in black ink so you can easily see 
um, this uh, came out pretty well. And I do have a Believe in a font that I kind of liked. So I um, printed this out with Publisher and I picked a font. Instead of me trying to draw this um, because I want to practice it, um, I could do that with a um, calligraphy pen too. Um, but we're just going to like go over it today um, to practice, to get that movement in. And I think sometimes tracing is one of the best ways to um, start to see those shapes. So we have all different kinds of shapes. Um, so we have some flowers, we have some leaves, um, and some even some little hearts inside of there. And the top one doesn't have a word, so if you wanted to print those and put in your own word, you could do that also. Um, I chose Believe because I feel like sometimes uh, motivation or whatever, um, confidence in ourselves or maybe it's a faith thing, whatever it is, like if you don't believe in yourself as much or have hope um, just to believe, you could put this somewhere, either on your desk or in your kitchen, to remind yourself to believe, you know, trust that things will get better, to have faith, whatever it is. You decide what it means or if you wanted to draw your own word in there. And you could do block lettering, you could do anything that you wanted. I just would suggest that you practice on paper or even if you did it um, with grid, like a graph paper or even on loose leaf paper to um, get all the same height, whatever you wanted to do, then you could also um, trace over that with using your window or if you have like a light box, um, then you could use that, a light pad or whatever. Um, okay. So I printed mine in grayscale because I'm going to practice. So um, like I said before, I'm not going to do uh, the whole coloring page on, um, on video. I'm going to do some parts and then skip ahead and uh, do sort of tutorials on different things. But right now I'm going to trace for you so that you can see um, I did this in pencil, then I went over it in marker, then I scanned it. So um, you could also do that too. And uh, if you have a scanner or you could take a picture of it, sometimes it looks really cool um, that way and not even just the real artwork. But I think everyone loves to get some kind of um, artwork from you. They know that you put a lot of time into it or whatever, so uh, it kind of means more, and then people keep them. <laughs> so that's a thing um, that you could do to make this into a large card, and then just write a cool note inside of it. Um, so here we go. I'm going to start on this edge, and I'm going to see if um, this marker is working. Of course not. That might be one of the ones that kind of gets burnt out from doing a uh, going over colored pencil. So um, I think I will be cutting at this point and starting again. Okay. All right, so right now I'm just tracing and I'm trying to like get used to these shapes or used to moving my hand that way. How do I anchor my hand on the paper so that I have better control. Um, as usual, I have uh, paper behind it, so this is just like my sketch pad, so that if any of the marker were to go through the paper, it wouldn't be um, on something important that uh, I don't want to mess up. So right now, I am actually not pressing down like you normally do this way when you write. I'm um, doing it at sort of an angle and my hand kind of has room to move because I'm using this part of my hand instead of trying to do this. Or when you're stuck here, you don't have a lot of movement. So I'm going to give it a try. Um, it does help to do um, something like that when you are uh, using the colored pencil that you're not pressing down hard on it. So we're going to give this to try and see how it goes. Um, and I think that that technique is working. I'm going to have to remember that. Um, so you're joining me on my journey. And you can see I already uh, 
deviated from the plan, <laughs> from the line, but I can make those like shadows and I can put in some detail like that, uh, you know, for our flowers. We'll see what color we put on there and whether it will show. So you want to give a little bit of that, the veining that you might see in a flower. You want to add those in. Um, if you did this with markers, you would get a totally different effect. So maybe next time I'll use the um, Crayola markers. And mine is in grayscale, so I'm hoping that you won't see all of these lines if I miss them, if I don't go over it the same way again. But I do like to have that contrast and have some darker spots, um, like I even did more here to uh, make that a little bit deeper, the shadow. Um, it's kind of nice to do that in some of your um, artwork because it creates more interest in detail. Uh, let's see. So um, I'm going to turn my camera a little bit, change the angle here so that you could see um, my hand better. Um, I think that this will show up better. It's a little bit of an, at an angle, but you get the idea. So I'm going to try and do this. I am not really good. I suppose I could get better if I practice this all the time. Because I told you like I had to kind of warm up with my pencil drawing and erase quite a bit. Um, I didn't get like the, the technique that I wanted the size of the petals or the completely same shape on everything. You can think of that as uh, making it a little more interesting if you want. Um, or you could think of it as a mistake. <laughs> and I didn't redo it. I just kept making petals going all the way around and trying to make this drawing at least look interesting as we go through and color. So this could be a little more perfect, but it's not. And sometimes that's okay, especially since we're counting as this as sort of a um, doodling exercise to get our hand and our eye uh, moving to see things clearly. And I just realized I was kind of um, not really close enough for my bifocals to work. So that could help if I got a little closer to um, see the line I'm supposed to be following clearly, maybe that would work. Uh, and I do, because I'm right-handed, I want to start on the left side of the page um, because I don't want to smear anything. And uh, this fine point Sharpie um, can, the longer you press on it, the bigger and um, the more that your marker will spread. So you kind of want to be careful that you just keep moving, even if you're not perfect, but that you keep moving. And um, you'll get some big dots if you don't just keep um, drawing and moving that marker. So you don't want to have too much of a puddle. Now you could also turn this around if the direction of these is uh, going to make a difference for you. I guess I don't seem to think that it matters for me to um, make these shapes which direction I'm going. So if you needed to be facing up and down, I do sometimes put a little bit of a line in here like the stem and you could do that too, but I don't want to put in too much detail until um, we've colored some of it because you might color over it. So we're going to see how it comes out. When you use the markers, you uh, see that black Sharpie through the marker. So it's a little bit different in the coloring with colored pencils. I just wanted to put in some like wisps of different kinds of leaves and things, so um, give it a try. And you could try this once you have um, done this and trace it a couple times, or even if you're better 
um, drawing and you don't really feel like you need to do that, try to come up with a composition like I had one large flower on this side and then I tried to put in things of interest like something over here otherwise it said it seemed like it ended and this space was strange um, and on this one we have the butterfly and a couple different flowers here um, to give it different depth in your composition so I'm going to continue drawing and um, I'm going to stop the video and finish that part. See, I'm trying to fix my mistakes, making a little bit darker. I don't know if that's going to show, so we'll find out. Um, so we'll be back in a second when I have this um, finished, this part of it. So now you can see I have done like the flowers and um, I stayed close to the lines, but it wasn't perfect. Um, so forgive yourself if you're not perfect, if you did it better than me, congrats. Um, I feel like I need to get back into the practice of all of this. And then I started to do the believe to trace over it. And I was going to say that we don't have as fine of a point as some of these little lines that were here, but that's okay. Um, just go over them. And I tried not to um, stop in a skinny spot. But I was thinking I would tell you um, my trick. And there are ways to like, um, I, don't, I forget what they call it, but it's kind of like fake lettering. You don't use the actual calligraphy pen, but you draw it in so you make this um, you just go down one side of the L and then um, fill that in as you go. So then you go back over it again on the other side. So you're like leaning toward the, um, you're riding the edge of the other side of that letter. And then fill in the middle and go up. It's kind of the way that I figured out um, off camera when I was doing the B. And this is coming out so much better than what I did over there. Although that's a lot of circles to do um, when you're not sure. I'm going to move the camera again in so you could kind of see what I mean. So I'm sort of coloring in this black spot, this fatter spot of the eye, and then coming down and going up. Now I did take calligraphy before and I should be way better at this, but I decided for today I would put something on here that I didn't have to worry about or stress over and I didn't need to get out my calligraphy pen. So if you didn't have a calligraphy pen, this is something that you could do. You could print a font and then trace over it and um, it won't be perfect, but that's okay. So I almost just like did um, straight lines and tried to just fill it in as if I'm coloring instead of uh, trying to actually write the letter like I would normally do. And I'm kind of picking up the marker as I get to the bottom in the hopes of not making that line um, too thick. And there you go. Done. All right. So now we're going to um, look at doing uh, the picture and what can we do for that part? How can we color this in with our handy dandy um, Crayola pencils? And um, usually, I like I have said before, I kind of pick more than one color uh, to do a flower or even three colors. Like I use all three of these plus the brown for a sunflower. Um, we do want this point, so I am going to, because we do have some small spots, so um, if you didn't, uh, sharpen those pencils, go do it right now. So as we start to color, I want you to think about those ideas again of our um, colored pencils and what we can do to make a different look for even our green leaves. 
because you can uh, mix red and green to get a different color because uh, these will sort of cancel each other out and you could use black although I'm not as fond of black and then you can even put in highlights with the yellow or mix with the yellow or you could just do the dark green and the light green and burnish your colors with the light green. So um, let's think about our shadows and um, where we can start. I'm going to start on the easiest thing to do right now and that would be uh, these little hearts. So here we've got our little heart and we could just fill it in and not go over the um, black line and they look really cute. So um, we're going to do that everywhere and um, we might want to do two layers. We don't have to press really hard. Remember we're trying to um, just let the pencil do the work. Uh, let the paper, the tooth of the paper do the work. Um, let's see. Oh, there's another one there. It's almost like a hidden picture. All right. Oh, I see another one here. So I'm just going to like color in those um, hearts. I have one up here. And I'm barely pressing um, and just letting, like I said, the colored pencil and the paper kind of do the work. And if I keep going over it, different directions, little circles, um, I'm going to get a nice saturated color, very smooth. And I'm going to go over this one more time and this one more time. And um, I feel bad because I just like went out of my heart a couple of times because I'm not close enough. And did you know that you can sort of erase colored pencil? At least make it so that it's not very noticeable. Um, that there's only a hint of red that's gone outside of the line. You could do that. It's kind of cool with colored pencils that you could do that. There are different ways in watercolor that you can erase a bit to make something lighter. Um, all right, so I think I got all of the hearts. And um, let's see. I know that I want to make these flowers red. And I want to make these yellow and orange. I had thought about some little blue flowers. Maybe we'll make these blue and purple. Let's see what we could do with that. So um, I'm going to put purple in the center and then blue up here. And um, I'm going to zoom in a bit. Let's see. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so that you can see that what I'm going to do is sort of uneven uh, with my pencil. I don't have a even coloring box, you know, like there's nothing here dividing this. But we're going to color those in and I'm doing lines up and down because flowers kind of have that. But I'm leaving this flower, um, these lines, oops, so the, we could put the blue here and um, sort of like feather it into the purple there and combine it. So we're, we're making this one um, purple and blue. So now you can uh, blend this together and go over the purple. And the purple is sort of like our accent color and shadow because it's deeper inside. Uh, so we're gonna try that on this one now. So I, I'm just kind of making uh, lines back and forth going into the purple. And then I'm doing circles around the end. And I'm going over it a number of times and then I'm going over the purple to burnish that in. Comes out kind of cool. So here we are again with the purple. And the purple. And now I'm going to do my circles around the edge to fill that in. 
my lines going into the, the purple and I'm going back over this again with my circles and then over the whole flower petal and I feel like I want more another layer right here I almost can see the paper on the edge here um, some artists say um, people better than me say that if you keep turning your pencil you won't have to sharpen it as much you'll keep this um, point I haven't experienced that but I have to say that sometimes with the colored pencils with the uh, Crayola ones they're not as soft they're a harder pencil so um, if you press down too hard and it's pointy you will groove the paper so you've like indented it and um, you can't really blend that out unless you press really hard on the whole petal and then it kind of loses some of the uh, painterly look of everything you know so you want to make sure that um, you're blending that in oh I see a little white spot um, I always like check again after I'm uh, done go back and look because I feel like you might miss a spot so we're gonna do three of these but I have to say that um, I can already think that I want this center a little darker so I'm gonna put blue right at the center of this and and I can tell already that it's hard for me to put another layer because I did that burnishing with the second color so maybe we'll try doing that before we do the light blue over the whole flower on the next one so we're gonna go in with our purple and like those lines and be a jagged half of the petal on each of those petals and give some jagged lines going up into that outer third of the petal. So I'm not going to press too much. I keep turning my paper because I think it is a little bit easier. So you do that if you would like to. Okay, so I have my purple. Now I'm gonna go in with um, my blue so this is the dark blue and I'm gonna put a little dark blue in the center and we're gonna see if um, that looks better because I wanted this center to be a little darker now we're gonna go over with our light blue and this light blue is circles on the outside and then those lines drawing into the purple. So we're getting some of that texture and the uh, veins that might be in the petals because it's not exact, you know, like blocks of color all the time. And filling in those white spots and then coloring down into the purple. I don't know I think it looks pretty good you can tell me in the comments if you think that you know it um one way was better than the other if you liked it or you can experiment with how you layer them it almost seems like that blue came out darker though being put over the top you can see it better the darkness inside the petal Oh, but I think I also did an extra line of Sharpie on that one. So I kind of shaded that one a little bit, uh, made more of a contrast on that than this one. Okay, so I have colored in pretty much all of that petal. And we have one more to do. So we're going to do the purple.
with those lines going to the outer part. And I feel like this one's a little bit more in the shadow. Let's try our navy blue again in here. And I did add some more Sharpie to that one to accent it too. And you can see, like I said, we're gonna see if you can see the black Sharpie lines and you can see it through there. And now we're back to our light blue that comes with this tiny, small kit of Crayola pencils. Um, so I'm doing my circles out here and then lines going down into the purple and then blue and then I am finishing it off with uh, circles over the whole petal. Here's my lines. That one I don't have a lot of space for my blue. And then over the purple. Same thing for these last two. I think that the cardstock holds up fairly well for a um, reasonable solution, no special paper. Um, we'll try next week to see if I could do the, um, the Bristol paper and see how that paper will work, if it's better than the cardstock, because I kind of like the cardstock myself. All right, so we're gonna um, do the inside, uh, just a yellow, make that stand out a lot. Okay, one down, one group down. All right, so let's switch to these now. And we're just gonna do this whole bottom yellow. And then these are kind of like shadows, like the, the petal is folding over there. So I don't know if you thought that um, you believed that you could do this yourself or um, could actually make a beautiful picture or maybe even enjoy this. Um, you might actually do that. Uh, and I'm going to put my lines are just going to be uh, the veins of the flower are going to be orange just to give it a little contrast. So we could add like a Sharpie into this um, but I thought I'd try using the orange and then this um, shadow part I was gonna make orange too now we're not doing like super realistic flowers we're just trying to make a pleasing um, picture as we go through this so you can um, experiment with different colors on these flowers, decide what you would like. So this one was also going to be yellow. And then I'm gonna put some orange around, do some orange veins in the petals, and then uh, the shadow, which is not sharpied in on the edge, I'm gonna do with the orange still on the edge. I'm just going to put a little bit on the edge of the petal and oh, my tip broke. It didn't sharpen very well, kind of went crooked. But since I have a hard edge, those lines are going to be easier. So here we have a little bit of orange for our shadow on the, on the end. Um, I don't think I'm going to go over the orange lines. I can't decide if I want to mute them or leave them kind of bold. I'm just making sure I get 
all of the white. Okay, now I think we'll do some of the leaves. These little tiny leaves, I like to, even when I use the markers, these little tiny leaves, I have a habit of just making them all one color, the darker green. Um, they're almost too tiny to do too much with. Um, you could alternate light green and dark green, like somewhere in the sun or whatever, but I kind of like this contrast because the green stands out really well against the reds and the yellows and the blues. Um, so I really like to do those that way. And then when I have like a larger petal, then I think about this is kind of shadowed. Maybe this edge is lighter and I'll do the light green on the outer edge. So we'll do like the middle here and the tip. So this is the highlighted part. The darker parts in the middle and then the lighter part is on top this one it's in the middle right here at the bottom this one I'm putting a lighter green in the middle and then going over the whole leaf with it this one I'm trying the tip is a little bit lighter than the base so when it gets closer to the um, the vein of the plant, the, the vein, oh my gosh, the vine, maybe that's what I was looking for. So I'm going to do these again with just a little bit of the darker green, and then we can try some other, um, I'm going to do that little tip there too, in the dark green, and then uh, maybe we'll try some other combinations and some of the other leaves. That looks pretty good. Oh, we have another one here because we're going to do that flower again too. And I had said I like those in red. So I'm going to do those in red. Okay, but I think we'll do maybe a combination of red and orange. So we're going to do the red on the bottom and the orange toward the top. And we're going to burnish the whole flower with the orange on the top. So it should um, blend all of our colors really well. And you can hear my husband is mowing the lawn. Hope it's not too loud. Maybe you can't even hear it. That would be good. Okay, so now we're gonna, um, yeah, we're gonna take our orange, put a little orange here for the top of the flower. And I think um, I changed my mind. I think I'm going to uh, go over the whole thing with red now. So the tops of our petals now have this kind of light. Um, we're looking for a little bit more of like maybe a red orange here. So I'm trying to like change um, this color of red and make it look a little different. So you could use the purple to change the red and it would be a more maroon or a dark red. Um, so here I'm going to go over the orange a little and with my circles and go over the red again. So now we have that deeper color and there's this hint of the orange at the top. I'm still not pressing very hard to um, to get this, but you'll see that like the Crayola pencils are, um, because they're a harder pencil, a harder wax, you're only going to get like three maybe light coloring um, layers out of this before you've kind of burnished the paper, you've flattened out 
the um, the tooth of the paper and there's nothing to grab onto the colored pencil anymore. One of the things that I like about it is that you end up with this very smooth blended color though and that waxiness that you're kind of buffing um, you're sort of with the friction warming up the wax and kind of spreading it around. I kind of like this and one of the other uh, experiments I wanted to do in this series was to use um, Vaseline to see if it would spread the colors more because you can use Vaseline or baby oil and then Gamsol which is like the professional no odor um, thinner. I really like the way that came out. Uh, let's see if we can do, because I thought this one should be red, but I almost want to make um, the center darker and it get lighter around, so maybe we'll add some yellow to this red flower. So the inside of the flower, I'm going to do this bottom half, like the inside half. I'm calling it the bottom, but it's not exactly the bottom, depending on how you're looking at it what direction it's going. Um, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to do the insides of these petals behind because this is our shadow of all of those petals. The deeper part is our shadow. So we're going to do that and then we're going to come in and um, try and blend it with our yellow and see what happens. So I'm doing that on all of these, putting a little red, even if it's a little petal there, because I didn't make my flower perfect. I'm going to do these as like a shadow, these lines on this outside, so it's as if the petal is curving outward, and then the uh, red in the closer to the center part of the petals. So I'm giving it all a little bit of a red and maybe like a, a jagged line. And now I'm going to this outside part and I'm gonna do the same thing. So um, this part with the uh, gray lines, if they're outside the petal um, drawing that we did or you see some gray lines in here um, for the shadow of the petal falling over. We're going to do that middle and do some jagged lines going up so we get some of that veinier look um, into our flower. This is a technique that you would use for any kind of rose and I feel like this is one of those, um, a different kind of rose, but a rose still. Okay, so now we're gonna go in with our yellow and um, do all of those tips. Let's see what happens. So we're kind of blending. We have the yellow now though that is sticking out. Even some roses have um, yellow tips at the ends. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. You'll have to let me know in the comments if you like it. And don't forget to um, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos of me experimenting. Um, there are different playlists in the description, too, of different kinds of videos that I've done. So I am experimenting on this one. And this is kind of how you learn um, what you like, how you want it to look. Now I think that I will make this a little bit orange. You just want that center to sort of stand out a little bit. Um, what do you think? Very different. I think I would even go over this a little bit more. It is a little more abstract. We don't have this um, total blending smooth like this one, which <clears throat> I think these are kind of my favorite to do. Um, 
this is okay but I think I will go go over my purple my yellow oh geez my orange lines so that it blends better it just didn't look finished to me so I'm gonna um, go over it again with the yellow so that it has more finished look and it looks like saturated or blended on the paper I like that the Sharpie though that doesn't like get covered by the pencil because I really do like seeing that I'm gonna do orange in the middle of this one but I am gonna come back and put some brown over that so that we can get a little different color because sometimes um, it's not quite bright orange on these and it looks a little shaded too okay I hesitate to leave this the way it is. I don't know if I like it. So I feel like you're also learning with me. This experimenting um, is kind of fun. And maybe from far away I kind of like it. But let's see if I can get this to blend a little bit more if I do circles around this edge can you see what I'm doing okay if I do circles around the edge of the um, jagged lines that I did on the red and lightly go over the yellow now it looks a little bit more blended I think I'm happier with that I think I like that better it looks a little more natural and you know this bottom one would be somewhat shaded too so that makes more sense. So I'm kind of going over the, um, the yellow down here on this outer part lightly with the red to help blend it in a little bit harder with where the jagged lines are and I think I'm liking it better. So, I'm kind of just doing a quick pass over some of these so they don't look, oh, I think I like that better. It looks a little more orange now. <laughs> We're blending our colors. Now, if you put white over here, it would just like um, dull the color. It wouldn't look as um, brilliant anymore. And I don't want to do that unless I'm putting something into the um, shadows or I want it to disappear. With these, I often do like the outer. Um, these are like doodle leaves. The outer edge is a darker color. And then I always go in the center, that's like the dip of the leave in the center. And then um, with my lighter green, fill in the, the rest of the leaf. And I'm blending over the middle on that one. I am gonna keep this darker if I went over with my lighter green it would lighten this outer edge, but I'm going to do two layers of the darker color. And then I'm going to do that on the other one here. Doing my little circles, trying to get all of the white. And my shadow for the dip in that vein of the leaf. And now I fill in 
with my light green. Okay, so I am going to um, color some more flowers and leaves and come back and talk about them. So I'm back with a, a lot of the colors um, put in on our leaves and I tried a number of different combinations. So on uh, these leaves I put in yellow first and then I covered it with the lighter green. Um, I, when I did the leaves on the bottom of this one, I put a little brown in the center to sort of darken that because it's really underneath the flower. Um, so it would be in the shadow. Um, this one, I just did the basic dark green, yellow green, dark green on the side. Um, this one, dark green sort of in the center, yellow, I mean the lighter green, um, either in the center, like that's the tip going down so it's a little more shadowed. Um, the ones for the blue flowers, I put the dark blue um, in the center to make it darker in the center and then covered it with the dark green and that gave us more of a blue green. So you can see that it's darker here. You can't really tell that it's blue but it's not as green as those. Um, so you can mix colors to make new colors all the time. Um, and then this one, I just did the dark green in the center and the light green on the outside. Most of the little ones I did in the dark green, but here I did it in the light green just to add some more um, interest, differences in colors. Um, so I was trying to decide what I should do for these flowers. You can see I put some lines there. I didn't put any there, so I'm going to add some now um, because it will show up in um, in the colored pencil. Yeah, and if you kind of draw it back toward yourself, you get some of those veins. Um, you decide what you think is easiest for you, um, but I really like adding that detail. I love working with markers. Um, outlining things and putting in those details too. So um, I thought I really would like pink, but I don't have pink. So what can I do? Well, let's see. I was thinking um, we're going to try uh, doing a darker red here. So make it pretty dark in the bottom. But we're going to leave the um, white showing toward the end. So I'm doing a very light shading of the red. It almost looks pink now because we're letting that uh, white of the paper come through. So I'm doing darker in the center of those, I mean in the toward the center of the flower. And I'm going to do a little darker there for the um, petal tipped over towards us, that shadow. And um, we're going to do the experiment with white. So we've done some of that uh, with the yellow, but this time we're going to go over this um, with the white. I actually did purple first and then white over this. White will sort of dull the um, black marker also. So we're going to see what happens because I'm going to try not to um, go over the black line with the white pencil. And we'll see if this gives us a more blended look. It sort of looks pink um, with the white. I don't know that the white is doing very much. It doesn't seem like it to me to make this look pink. But it does look pink on the camera, I can see. It's definitely not red. I wonder if you put the white down first. I didn't do any white flowers in here because that's a whole nother tutorial the way that I like to do them anyway. Um, I was just going with the blending of colors because we're practicing that. I think it looks pink. That's awesome. Okay, so we're gonna do that to this over here. And then I think we'll talk about um, 
some ways that we can uh, create a little more contrast. And I'll just hope that my Sharpie doesn't get clogged with wax. So we did the, uh, the dark at the center of that, at the bottom of the petal, sort of where those lines are. And now I'm gonna go in very lightly with, um, those are like little shadows, with my um, tip of the petal so it looks pink. And then we're gonna go over with white. That's kind of cool. All right, here we go. See what happens. Sometimes you'll even get like the color will be on the tip of this pencil. So you might want to check it um, if you're going over like red or orange or something so you don't get that color mixed in um, when you go to color something else with the white. You might have some on there. All right, well, I think it looks sort of pink. And I like that it's not really, like you can see some of the white there, that it's not really covered perfectly because that gives um, texture and detail to the petals. At least in my mind it does. So I can see that I dulled the black line there too, because I went over the black line. That's the way it goes. So I did it on that one too. All right. So the last thing that we have is the butterfly and you could see that I did something different to the butterfly because all we had was sort of an outline and you could color that however you like you could make it two different colors four different colors however you would want to do it but i was thinking like what does the um monarch butterfly look like and i did this uh watercolor painting a long time ago um and this is actually black watercolor paint it took quite a few coats it was not super easy to do, but I wanted to try it. And my mom's favorite thing is butterflies, so she has one half finished at my house too. And I was thinking that um, I would like to get this idea. Maybe I can't do all of that detail because it's so small. So you could see that um, I can't just color anything with one color. <laughs> so there's like orange and yellow and different gradation in it. Um, I think that that uh, gives us more interest. So I decided I was going to um, do the orange and yellow idea. So I'm going to do orange here. And then I'm going to do yellow and orange here and yellow in this little spot. Some yellow in spots here and then go over it in the orange and just combine them all. So it looks sort of like different colors, like a butterfly would be. And I also like thickened around the edges because it was sort of like that in the um, monarch butterfly pattern. But I'm gonna try not to uh, blend everything together. And I'm gonna go back over this with some yellow. I think it's bright and it stands out. And you know, butterflies are a sign of rebirth. So um, if you believe that you can be better, do better, um, feel better, look at the butterfly and remember that. Um, so I think that my project is pretty much done. Um, uh, the next part that I'm going to do is um, stay tuned for this one in Prismacolor. I got a set of Prismacolor pencils because I wanted to see if I could do, um, you know, like a different combination with similar colors and how would it, how different are they as they color? Cause they're a softer lead, a softer color pigment. Um, and then would they blend easier? 
Um, we're going to find out in the next episode. So I hope you enjoy coloring and experimenting. And don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you. Share this video, video with others.